All right, so for this problem, guys, I'm gonna write down these steps for you how to do all these problems. They're all gonna be exactly the same. So if you're having confusion, just need to look back on one problem and say, all right, how did I solve this one problem? I'm gonna do all the problems exactly the same way. So the first thing we always wanna do is determine what our amplitude is. Remember the amplitude is the absolute value of A. Where is your A? A is your number that is in front of your function. So here, I do not have a number, so therefore I know that it can be one, right? One times anything is gonna equal your sign. So therefore I have the absolute value of one, which is one. Now we need to remember, what does the amplitude tell us? The amplitude tell us, tells us the distance our graph goes up and that our graph goes down from the x-axis, okay? Next thing is our period. The period is the length it takes our graph to complete one cycle. So the definition for a period is 2 pi divided by b, where b is your number in front of x. Now a lot of you might say, oh, well, the, I don't see a number in there, so it's 1. And you're correct. But remember that 1 is being divided by 3. So therefore, my b One third. Does anybody have a question why I got one third as my B? Because I'll be more than happy to explain it. It's just, X by three is the same thing as one third times X. Right. <clears throat> Do I have to put the two in? Yeah, I mean, I'm just making sure that everybody understands why I got one third. Because I have a one, and that one is being divided by the three. So my B is one third. So now to write it, I have two pi divided by one third. So what happens when you have a fraction in your denominator? Well, multiply by the reciprocal on your top and bottom. That obviously cancels the 1. And I'll just rewrite this. 2 pi times 3 over 1. Well, that's over 1 as well. So you end up getting 6 pi. Okay? So um, then when I look at this, is there anything else that's going on? No. Um, the next thing we want to do is determine what our four important points are. All right? So we take 6 pi. So you take your period and you divide it by 4. Now, why are you doing this? In, in a period, in a one cycle, there's four important points for the sine function. Do you guys remember what the paragraph looks like? Okay? There's four important points. There's a maximum point, an intercept, and a minimum point at the end of the cycle. So there's four important points. This, the, the distance between these four important points are all the same. So that's why I want to equally divide it. So it's equally divided into four different sections. So what I want to do is I want to take my whole period, which in this case is 6 pi, and divide it evenly into four different parts. That will help me determine which each of those parts are. So I take 6 pi divided by 4, and what do I get? I get 3 pi over 2. So you say, okay, how is that going to help you? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw our graph. All right? On our graph, we look at our amplitude. Our amplitude is 1, so my graph is only going to go as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. It's a sine graph, so I know it crosses at the x and y intercept. There's no reflection, so I know my graph is gonna start kind of going like this. Then I said there's four important points, right? So let's just graph, let's just put those four important points there. One, two, three, four. As the fourth point is your end of your period, which is six pi. Okay, so that's one period. Now, we now need to determine what are the rest of these points. Well. The first point, remember I said each one of, between each point is equal, equal distance? So the first point is just easily going to be what you divided. 3 pi divided by 2. Okay? Then you add another 3 pi over 2. So I'd say 3 pi over 2 plus another 3 pi over 2. Which gives you 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi. Right? Yes. Then you take 3 pi, add a 3 pi over 2 again, 
to get 9 pi over 2. Does everybody see how I'm getting this work? All right. So therefore, I know my first, my maximum point, by looking at the sine graph, I know my maximum is going to be up there. My intercept will be right there. My minimum is going to be down here. And my last end of my cycle will be right there. So then we simply just connect the dots. All right. Then it says to do two periods. You can do two periods going to the left, or you can do two periods going to the right. Either way, what you're doing is just adding or subtracting 3 pi over 2. Okay? Like I said, just for the fact of the other video. And remember, it infinitely goes to the right and infinitely goes to the left. Do we have to do that? Yep, and you just keep on adding 3 pi over 2, which is your next even interval. Make sense? So guys, it doesn't matter what your problem is. There's one more step I want to show you, but it doesn't matter what type of problem you're doing. Amplitude, period, find your four important parts. Then just know what your parent graph looks like and follow up there. Yes, ma'am. How is the 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 equals 3 pi? Okay. 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 is going to give you 6 pi, right? Remember when you have fractions, you add the top, and the denominator remains the same? No, you just add the top. Right. Exactly. Okay. That's that for that problem.